Hey guys, Jeremy here, and I'm at the Lithgow Women's Shed near the showgrounds. Now this shed is almost finished, there's still some finishing to be done. We can see the exposed hempcrete walls behind me and those lovely windows letting in that beautiful northern sun. It's April here in Lithgow, so autumn, and there's some lovely colours of the trees uh, that are shining through right now. And we can see how the sun is at that certain level in the sky here in autumn. And we can see how it's coming through these high quality windows and penetrating to warm up the space. In summer, it'd be higher in the sky and these eaves would be protecting this building from the sun so you wouldn't get much sun in there and this slab would hold the cool uh, temperature and release that back into the building. And in the winter, as the sun dips lower and lower in the sky, the sun penetrates through these windows and it warms up the whole building naturally, but it also warms up this slab, which acts as kind of like a battery bank for that, for that thermal, that heat, it's a thermal mass. Just before we dive in, a quick shout out to the Impact Story Lab here in Sydney by Digital Storytellers, as well as Dick Clark and James Isaacs, whom without this video would not be possible. I'd also like to mention our major sponsors, the Hemp Building Directory at hempbuilding.au. This video is part of a bigger mission, one that you are part of just by watching. My purpose grew out of a midlife pivot. While studying building design during COVID as a single dad, I was struck by how sustainability was really not being taken seriously in the curriculum or by the building industry. I felt someone had to do something about this. I've realized I am that someone and Hempcrete, with all its known and yet to be discovered potential, is the vehicle I've chosen. Come along for the ride. The Lithgow Women's Shed was commissioned by the Lithgow Area Women's Shed Incorporated, funded in large part by a federal Black Summer Bushfire Recovery Grant. The project was born from a need for a resilient, fire resistant and energy efficient structure that could serve the whole community, especially in times of crisis. That was the brief given to Dick Clark of Envirotecture, who not only designed the building, but also steered it through a complex stakeholder landscape. This is not just a shed. This is one of the first government funded buildings in Australia made from hemp. Most government buildings go up with carbon heavy materials like concrete and foam. This one, it breathes, it stores carbon, it puts community and climate first. It hasn't all been smooth sailing, but as with many innovative public builds, there have been hurdles. But even at this lock up stage, the structure already speaks volumes and is smart, solid and ready for its final touches. This isn't a flashy inner city build. It's for a regional women's organization, fire affected and often underserved, but absolutely deserving of the best that modern construction has to offer. This design follows passive house principles, airtight construction, thermal mass, and smart passive solar gain. Take a look at these triple glazed PVC windows made right here in Australia using European materials. When the sun is lower in the northern sky in autumn and winter, it streams through the northern facing windows, warming the internal slab, which acts as a thermal battery. In summer, deep eaves keep the sun out and the hempcrete walls hold to cool in. Inside, it stays surprisingly stable. Warm in winter, cool in summer. This place isn't just efficient, it's comfortable. There's also a mechanical heat recovery ventilation system which filters and tempers the air while keeping the envelope sealed tight. And if needed, two small aircon units kick in after the ceiling fans, reducing unnecessary power draw. The building's SIP roof spans over 20 metres in some sections, using structurally insulated panels that deliver both structural integrity and insulation in one. Instead of battling the climate with machines, this building works with it, passively, intelligently and naturally. James Isaacs of Balabula was the builder on this project, and his preferred hempcrete installation method is cast in situ. These hempcrete walls have a full 300 millimetres thick insulation, which also provides a modicum of thermal mass. The result? Beautifully straight, breathable, sound dampening off form hempcrete walls. Walls that are naturally beautiful. For too long, good enough has meant cheap plasterboard, bat insulation and sealed plastic vapour barriers plus toxic paint. Hempcrete removes the need for all these layers, redefines what quality looks like whilst being natural, breathable and built to last. This was a volunteer heavy build and credit goes to the many locals who got involved. In just four weeks, over 100 cubic metres of hempcrete were placed, averaging five to six walls per day. That's a huge community effort. 
Now, before I jump into the super important carbon science-y part of this video, and from experience, I know a bunch of you watching out there will tune out or drop off, I need to give a massive thanks to Dick Clark from Envirotecture and James Isaacs from Bilabula Hemp Homes for their invaluable input on this video project. It's a privilege to learn from people who have such depth of experience and knowledge. And I must say, I'm beyond stoked to be living my hemp dream. Also, a quick nod to the Australian Hemp Masonry Company who supplied the Australian manufactured binder for this project. Now, I'm not a scientist, but here's what I've learned so far. Hempcrete stores carbon, not in some speculative future tech kind of way, but here and now in a measurable climate positive way. Simply, hemp sequesters CO2 as it grows, which gets locked into the walls of structure in this hempcrete. On average, 100 cubic metres of hempcrete can store between 10 to 15 tonnes of CO2 equivalent. That's because as hemp grows, it absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. As a major component in hempcrete, the hemp herd, this carbon-rich biomass, is locked into the walls of the structure. And it doesn't stop there. The lime binder used in hempcrete also absorbs CO2 as it cures process called carbonation. So unlike conventional materials like concrete or bricks, which emit carbon, hempcrete actually draws it down. Now I am ballparking here, but for some rough figures around this project, around 77 cubic metres of hempcrete were placed on site. Using conservative figures, that means the Lithgow Women's Shed has sequestered approximately 9.5 tonnes of CO2 equivalent, just from the hempcrete alone. Let's break it down. Each cubic metre of hempcrete can store between 100 and 150 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. Multiply that across 77 cubic metres and you get a potential ballpark figure of 7.7 .7 to 11.55 tonnes, with 9.5 tonnes being a conservatively defensible estimate. And this is before accounting for the carbon savings from avoiding things like the manufacturing and transport of wraps and insulation, plasterboard or energy hungry thermal mass materials. Conventional construction has been one of the biggest drivers of emissions on the planet, but it doesn't have to be. Hempcrete flips that and projects like this prove it's not just possible, it's already happening. Again, I am not a scientist. I studied building design, I love sustainable building, but if you really want the nitty gritty, go and do your external research. But we can see from all this that the Lithgow Women's Shed is well into carbon negative territory. Additionally, it will require virtually zero external energy sources for heating and cooling. This is rare in today's construction, but exactly the kind of shift we need right now. Now before I sign off, I better do a quick shout out to our major sponsor, the Hemp Building Directory, Australia's central resource for hemp builders, suppliers and projects. If you're planning a hempcrete build, check out hempbuilding.au. Support the network that's helping build better. And as a super easy way to help out and stay connected, please use the free sign up of our newsletter. Just simply snap that QR code. What I love most about this project is what it represents a shift a move away from toxic materials and energy hungry buildings towards homes and hubs that nurture and sustain. For decades the building industry has pumped out carbon heavy structures with toxic materials baked in but that model is cracking and builds like this are the blueprint for what's next. When I pivoted careers during the chaos of COVID as a single dad studying building design I was frustrated by how little sustainability factored into the curriculum. That frustration became fuel Projects like this are proof that we can do better, and being part of bringing hempcrete out of the fringes is profound as an inner purpose. I've filmed many hemp homes across Australia, including fire zone rebuilds like the one I visited at Mulua Bay. But this structure, this has scale, it's local government leading the way, and proving that natural building materials can meet modern standards and deliver social and environmental benefits. ESG at its finest. So there we are, the Lithgow Women's Shed in its current in progress construction state. Um, very lucky to be able to have a walk around on this architecturally significant building. One of the first council buildings, probably the first council building built out of hempcrete in Australia. And so very important for uh, the hemp building scene. Um, we can uh, hope that because of this building, more people will want to build out of hemp and the carbon that is in the air can lock, get locked into some walls that have fantastic insulation. So win-win for the environment and the community and the world. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of this video. Every single watch counts. And if you can give it a thumbs up, write a comment, ask a question, and even share it with your friends. Of course, if you wanna check out the upcoming videos, please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.